The Legendary Chosen One Chapter 1 Awakening Andel's village was way out in the middle of nowhere. It didn't have any famous landmarks or specialty goods. There was no reason for anyone to visit it at all. Little by little, more and more of the villagers had to move out, or at least commute to Heimdall for work. Andal was a curious boy by nature, so when his father offered to take him to the capital one day, he jumped at the chance. He wanted to see what made this place so special. It wasn't long before he found out. Back home, nothing ever seemed to change from day to day, year to year, but the big city was full of all kinds of things he had never seen before. I need to go to work, so stay here in this plaza and play until I'm done, his father told him. Okay, don't forget to snag me a souvenir. Ondo looked around the plaza. There were plenty of other children there, but his eyes were drawn to three kids standing off to one side. They were striking dramatic poses and making strange, exaggerated movements. That didn't look like any game he'd seen before. Hi, what are you guys playing? We're playing Legendary Heroes. We only learned it ourselves a while back. Undel's eyes lit up with excitement. Whoa, that sounds so cool. How'd you find out about it? It's a funny story. These weird kids showed up one day and taught everyone how to play, but none of us had ever seen them before. And they talked kind of weird, like they were from olden times or something. Awesome. I wish I could get cool ideas like that. We don't know how much of it is true, but whatever. Don't think about it too much and just have fun with it. Sounds good. Can you teach me how to play too? The game of Legendary Heroes involved setting up a peculiar ritual with tree branches to infuse you with ancient power. When that was done, the first thing that popped into each hero's head became their sacred mission. Before long, Andel and the others had become fast friends, and soon enough, his father arrived to take him home. The next day, Andel went to tell his friends Monty and Keith about everything he'd seen in the capital, including the new game. I don't know, it sounds kind of weird. Like, what do you even do? Keith was always trying to act grown up. Sometimes it took a lot to convince him to join in with his friend's games. Monty, on the other hand, tended to be shy and timid. But he liked the sound of this. If we don't have to fight bad guys or do anything scary, then maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah, and we might even turn into legendary heroes for real. <sighs> yeah, right. Come on, let's get this over with. You'll probably get bored of it after an hour or so. Andal set up the ritual just the way his new friends in the city had shown him. He gathered ten tree branches and stuck them into the ground in a roughly circular pattern. Then he, Monty, and Keith stepped into the circle and chanted the magic spell, We call upon the power of the Ancient Ones. Each friend then picked up one of the sticks and held it aloft like a sword. So, the other sticks are our magic circle, right? Right. It's filling us with ancient power, just like the heroes from the olden times. Andel struck a dramatic pose, as if this moment was far too important to let pass without doing something special to mark it. Quit it, you're gonna- Huh? Keith was cut off by a clatter as the seven sticks all fell down one after another, forming a strange symbol. They began to glow, getting brighter and brighter, and soon the three friends were engulfed in an ethereal light. Andel looked up at the sky and seemed to hear a solemn voice speaking directly into his mind. Ye who have gathered here, I grant unto you the power to change your destiny. Chapter 2. Conquest The voice finished speaking, and three pillars of light descended from the heavens into the three boys. Then it vanished as quickly as it came. They looked at the sky again, and then at each other. Had all that been real? You think maybe we got so into the game we started hearing things? No way! We all heard the same thing! It had to be real! That voice said it would give us power. Maybe we can... I don't know, use some kind of special skills now or something. Andel tried waving his arms around, but nothing happened. Come on, give us some kind of hint. Andel tried raising his arm one more time. Suddenly, there was a crackle of energy, and lightning, or something that looked a lot like it, started to shoot out of his palm. Whoa, did you see that? Come on, guys, you try it too. Following their friend's example, the other boys raised their hands, a wild wind shot out from Monty's, 
while Keith's unleashed a torrent of water. Undel was thrilled. It worked! We got the hero's ancient power for real! With this, we could take over the world or something. That'd be cool, right? The others were less enthusiastic about their newfound powers. I could never do that. I get scared just talking in front of big groups of people. We can't go showing off this power to just anyone. We have to keep it a secret. Or else people will try to use it for crimes and stuff. Undel couldn't believe his ears. What's wrong with you guys? We were given these powers for a reason. We can't just waste them. Well, fine. If you're chicken, then I'll do it myself. Before they could reply, he stomped away, leaving them still a little dazed and confused about what had just transpired. I'll show them. I'll show them all. Taking over the world will be a cinch. And I'll start with the kids in the plaza. The next morning, Andal snuck out of his house and went to the capital alone. He found all the kids at the plaza and showed them his new trick. Check it out. It worked. I'm a real legendary hero now. Wow, that's so cool. You can shoot beams without using an orbman or anything. This was exactly the reaction Andel had been hoping for. What was wrong with Keith and Monty? Who wouldn't want to be a hero and have people admire them like this? I'm going to tell everyone about this and take over the world. Follow me. With another mighty cheer, they all set off joyously. Andal now set his sights on the city's grown-ups. He showed his power to them just as he had to the kids, but it didn't work out the way he expected. None of them took him seriously. They all thought it was just some kind of childish game and told him not to play with orbments. Andal grew impatient. He raised his palm again and again, and with each bolt he sent into the sky, the clouds got darker and darker. Before long, a storm was raging up above. Lightning struck an orbal streetlight, shattering the glass and bending the pole into a strange, twisted shape. See? Not just anyone can do that, right? That got their attention. People who'd been passing by were now stopping to stare at the destruction. I'm going to use this power to become a legendary hero. Follow me to glory! Now they'd all fall in line and cheer for him. Or so Andel thought. One old man clearly had other ideas. Now look here, Sonny. Enough of this horseplay. You can't go around smashing things up like that. What would you have done if one of them bolts had hit someone, hey? What if you'd hurt one of your friends or burned someone's house down? His words shook Andel. They had an even more dramatic effect on the crowd. Everyone started to lose interest and wander off. Even the kids who'd followed him all this way. It's supposed to be three heroes, right? Queried one kid. This guy's gotta be fake. Slowly but surely, they all disappeared. I'm not a fake! It's true, you saw what I can do, right? I'm the chosen one! But they wouldn't listen. Dejected and alone, Andal dashed down a back alley. He was afraid he might burst into tears, and he didn't want anyone to see that. Eventually, he found himself at an empty lot. He thought he was finally alone, but then a man appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Hey kid, you're one of the legendary heroes, right? Don't worry, I believe in you. You're the real deal, I can tell. Finally, someone who understood. Thanks, I was kind of starting to wonder if I'd made some kind of mistake. The man knelt down so he could look Andel right in the eye. Nah, I think the only mistake you made was not going far enough. Something about the way the man spoke was unsettling. Suddenly, Andal felt a pressure over his mouth and a strange smell, and he started to feel very sleepy. <laughs> I can't believe he fell for it. Some chosen one he turned out to be. With that, the man hoisted Andal over his shoulder and stuffed him into the back of an orbital car. Chapter 3 the Chosen Ones. When he woke up, Andel was still in the back seat of the car. The strange man from before was driving. Oh, you're awake. Don't get any funny ideas, all right? I got friends stationed in your village. You try to escape, and I give them the signal to torch the place. Understand? 
What are you going to do with me? Andal was trying his best not to sound scared. That's a real talent you got there. It's like you said. Not just anyone can call down lightning without using a quartz or orbment. The way I see it, there's all kinds of ways I can make money off of you. The man spoke casually, as if kidnapping a child off the streets and threatening an entire village was the most natural thing in the world. Ondel hadn't been tied up or gagged, but he still felt trapped. There were probably countless ways to escape from this situation, but he had no choice but to stay put. What am I doing? He thought. I don't have to do what this guy says. I could probably knock him out with a bolt of lightning. But what if I mess up and kill him? What if he gets his signal out and his friends burn down the village? Andal remembered how the old man in Heimdall had scolded him for his irresponsible behavior and the way his friends back home had acted. Keith and Monty were right. No hero. Showing off just got people mad at me. And now I'm in this mess. Being given a special power that was uniquely his had gone to his head. But he saw the truth now. He was still just a kid, and the situation he had been put in made him feel more helpless than ever. The kidnapper smirked. Say goodbye to Erebonia, kid. Odds are you ain't gonna see it again for a long time. There was no response. In fact, the back of the car was unusually quiet all of a sudden. Was the kid just sulking? He adjusted the rearview mirror. Hey, I don't know what you're up to, but... He was gone. There was no sign of Ondel anywhere. The kidnapper tried to twist around to see better, but the next moment, a shock went through his entire body. Ondel had crouched behind the driver's seat and unleashed one of his bolts. Why, you little- The shock wasn't enough to knock the kidnapper out, but it did slow him down long enough for Ondel to grab the steering wheel. The car veered off the edge of the road, swerving in every direction. You idiot! You're gonna kill us both! The kidnapper wrenched the wheel away just in time to avoid crashing into a tree and slammed on the brakes, hard. While he was doing that, Andel used a lightning punch to shatter the passenger side window, giving him the perfect escape route. So long, sucker! Thanks for slowing down for me! A moment later, he jumped, entrusting his safety to Adios. I know I'm just a kid. If anything really bad happens, there's no way I'll be able to make up for it. But I can't just sit around and let this happen. I figure I can still do something. For a moment, it seemed like Andal was going to hit every branch on every tree before being dashed onto the cliffs below. But then a blast of wind blew the branches aside and slowed his descent. He felt something, no, someone, knock into him. And they both tumbled to the ground. They were shaken, but still very much alive. Andal looked at the person who'd stepped in to rescue him, It was Monty, the boy who'd been blessed with the power of wind. He was panting for breath, but still managed to choke out a wry laugh. I never thought you'd actually get kidnapped. I thought that kind of stuff only happened in books. (laughs) Yeah, thanks, man. I would have been a goner for sure if you hadn't been here. And I'm sorry I got so carried away with the whole world domination fantasy. I was being really dumb. No worries. I wasn't sure I could be brave enough to do something like this. But when I saw you jump out the window, I didn't even have to think about it. It just kind of happened. No sooner had Monty finished his speech than they heard a loud bang from behind them, where the Orbal car had been. They quickly turned to look. When Ondel jumped, the kidnapper didn't chase after him. He was having enough trouble just trying to right the car and save his own skin. Stupid brat! I'm going to let the others know about this! You're in for it now! Driving out of the forest and back onto a solid road, he grabbed his communication device. The voice that answered him didn't sound like any of his allies. It sounded a lot younger. Sorry, but your buddies are all tied up. You're the only one left. (laughs) And it looks like you saved us the trouble of finding you. It was true. By some strange coincidence... The car had come to rest on the outskirts of Ondel's village, and there was Keith, holding another comm device and fixing the kidnapper with a fierce look. Damn it! I don't know what's going on here, but I am sick and tired of you kids giving me the runaround! He floored the accelerator, ready to drive right through Keith if necessary. The boy stayed calm and sent a stream of water out of each of his hands, aiming at the car's front tires. They burst with a mighty bang 
and the car spun out of control toward another large tree. Keith summoned another stream of water, turning the ground to mud and stopping the vehicle in its tracks. He sighed. And here I told Ondel we should keep these powers secret. But I guess it's okay to use them a little, if it means helping people. With the kidnapper and his gang under lock and key, Andel was free to return home to his friends and family. His parents scolded him for running off in the first place, but they hugged him that much harder now that they knew he was all right. At the time, he couldn't put how he was feeling into words, but he could tell something had changed. He had taken his first real step toward growing up. This is just a story, of course, but you see the point I'm trying to make, right? Power on its own isn't good for anything. Whatever kind of strength or talent you might have, think hard about how you can use it to improve the lives of others. Understand? Yes, sir! It was another normal day at a normal little academy. Instructor Andal was well-liked by his students. He always told the best stories. No one really knew what he did outside of working hours, though. And no one would ever connect him or his two friends to the mysterious team that worked so hard to protect the people of Erebonia from the shadows. This was a group no one knew for sure even existed. It was just a rumor, an urban legend. They had been chosen to wield power unlike anyone else. And in their own way, they had become heroes.